Hello again. Uh, so today, what we're going to be looking at is now how to uh, name ionic compounds given the formula. So previously, what we had just done uh, is we learned how to write the actual formula uh, given either the name or given the different atoms together. And we we're able to figure out uh, in what ratio they actually exist by understanding their charge. So this is going to be a little bit simpler because of the fact that you've already been given uh, the formula. Now we're just going to go backwards. Now, uh, when we want to name an ionic compound, uh, what you do is, there's a few easy steps here, one, two, three. Uh, the first step is, very simply, you name the metal. Okay, so the metal is always written first. Uh, the only exception of it not being a metal is if it's a cation, which is ammonium. But other than that, all ionic compounds, the first, the first part of the compound is going to be a metal. So we're going to name the metal first, and you just simply write the name of the metal. That's it. Nothing else, just write the name of the metal. Secondly, you name the non-metal, which is the anion. Now, for the anion, you do have to do something to the name of it. You have to change the ending to IDE or ide. So, for example, oxygen becomes oxide, nitrogen becomes nitride, sulfur will become sulfide, phosphorus becomes phosphide, uh, bromine becomes bromide, and so on and so forth. So, let's go ahead and do a couple examples here. Now, part three Step three here has to do with transition metals. The first five that we're going to do have, uh, they're not transmit transition metals. They're simple uh, binary ionic compounds. So we're just going to go through steps one and two first. Step three will apply to our other examples over here, which are all transition metals for the cations. But let's start off here with Li2O. So the first thing we need to do is we simply need to name the cation. The cation in the front here is Li, and the anion here is O. So Li, the name of the uh, atom for Li is lithium, and the name of O is oxygen. But because it's uh, an anion and it's the second, uh, second word in the name, we change the ending to IDE, and so oxygen will now become oxide. And it's as simple as that. We're done. Li2O is lithium oxide. So you simply name the cation first, name the anion second, and change the ending of the anion to IDE. Let's do number two, Al2O3. Al2, or Al itself, is aluminum. Okay. Aluminum. And as we already know, O represents oxygen. It doesn't matter about the subscript. It just matters what the name of that particular ion is. O is oxygen. We change the ending to I. It becomes aluminum oxide. Okay. Now, you can do number three on your own. I'll give you the uh, answer at the end of the video. But number four I'd like to do as well because it has a different uh, element in there other than oxygen. So if we look at Mg3N2, Mg3N2 is first name the cation, which is going to be magnesium. And N, as we know, is nitrogen. But nitrogen, as the anion, we change the ending to IDE, it becomes nitride. Now, coming up with these names is very simple. The reason why it's so simple is because all you have to do is look at the symbol and match the symbol with the symbol on the periodic table and write the name. So Li is lithium, O is oxygen, we change the ending to oxide. Uh, Al is aluminum, O is oxygen, change the ending to ide, so aluminum oxide. Magnesium, Mg, find on the periodic table, it is magnesium. Uh, and then N, find on the periodic table, is nitrogen, change the ending from nitrogen to ide, so it becomes nitride. Uh, please go ahead and do number five on your own, and you can pause the video now and you can work on these two, and I'll give you the answers in just a moment. Okay, so the name of CaO is going to be calcium oxide, cation is calcium, uh, anion is oxygen, change the ending to IDE, becomes oxide. Uh, Na3P, the cation is sodium, so we write sodium. And phosphorus is the uh, anion, we change the ending to IDE, it becomes phosphide. It is not phosphoride, it is phosphide. Okay? So this is how we're going to name simple ionic binary compounds. However, uh, we have other binary compounds that now instead of having a type 1 metal, which is a metal that's in group 1 or 2, which has a fixed charge, 
Uh, we now have transition metals, which are considered type two. And these type two, they have varying charges as we see on our ion sheet. So how are we gonna know the actual charge of this? Well, number one, we know that it can be one of two charges because of our ion sheet. But secondly, it's because we have to look at the anion and name from there. So the third step in our naming is, well, number one, we're gonna name the metal first, name the cation. Then we're gonna name the anion, changing the ending to ide, I-D-E. But if the metal has a multiple charge, because the transition metal, we actually have to write the charge in the name. But how do we write the charge in the name? We represent it as a Roman numeral. So we're gonna practice this on these four here. We're gonna start off with Fe2O3. So the first thing that we wanna do is, okay, the cation here is the metal, which is right in front, which is uh, Fe, and then the anion then will be oxygen. So if we name this, we know that this is iron, and we know that this is going to be oxide. The question is, what Roman numeral are we going to place here? Well, in order for us to do that, we have to understand what the ions are. Specifically, we have to look at the anion. So if the anion is oxygen, and we know that oxygen is in group six, so therefore it has a charge of negative two, and there are three of them, that means that the charge on the anion is negative six. Okay, so again, oxygen in group six has a charge of negative two. There are three of them according to the formula, so we're gonna multiply its charge, negative two by three, and that gives us a charge of negative six on the anion. Well, as we know, ionic compounds have to be neutral, which means the cation then has to add up to positive six in order to cancel out the negative six. Well, the only way for that to work is, well, we're told there are two irons in this compound. And if it has to add up to six, that means that both of these iron atoms, what charge do they have to be? They have to be three. So it has to be Fe plus three. Having two of them now gives us a total of six, and these uh, would now cancel out. So what does that tell us now? It tells us that iron in this compound has a charge of plus three. Then in order to show that, we'll write our Roman numeral here in parentheses, one, two, three, and the name of this ion would be iron three oxide. Now, the other way that it can be written is using the Latin name, and this could also be called ferric oxide, and it would be the same thing, it's the same exact answer, okay? So again, here's what we did in order to make sure that we know how to do number one. We are going to name the cation first and then the anion, but we have to determine is the metal, is it a type one or a type two metal? Type one meaning it has a fixed charge, only one charge. The type two means it can have multiple charges. For the sake of iron, looking at our ion sheet, we know that iron can be both plus two and it can also be plus three. Well, for us naming it, then we have to be able to determine what the actual charge is and represent it now with Roman numerals. So how did we determine the charge on iron? We had to first determine the anion. So we know that oxygen, as it's in group six, has a charge of minus two. We also know that according to the formula of Fe2O3, that there are three oxygen ions here. So therefore, three times the charge of negative two gives us negative six. Well, we know that ionic compounds have to be neutral when they're written out, which means the iron cation has to add up to six in order to cancel out the negative six of the, of the anion. So looking at the formula, we know that there are two iron ions. Well, if we know it has to add up to positive six and there are two of them, then that means the charge on iron has to be a plus three because plus three times two or plus three plus three gives us positive six. Now that there's a positive six, it will cancel out the negative six, leaving a charge of zero on the ionic compound. Then once we figure that out, now we have to represent it in the name by using a Roman numeral. So because it's a charge of three, we use the Roman numeral three. So the name of this compound then would be iron three oxide, otherwise known as ferric oxide. Now let's go ahead and do uh, number two to make sure that we can do this. So, in the same way, step number one, we're going to first name the cation, and then we're gonna name the anion. Because this is a type two metal, it is a transition metal. If you look at the, period, if you look at the ion sheet, uh, we know that SN can have multiple charges. It can be SN plus two, it can also be SN plus four. 
So in order to determine which one it is, we have to look at the anion, which in this case, again, is oxygen. So we know that oxygen, well, we know the ending of oxygen is going to change to oxide. And we know that Sn represents tin. Okay, Sn is tin. Then based on the anion here, oxygen, as you know, has a charge of minus 2. And there are two of them, which makes this a charge of minus 4. Then tin has to then have what charge? It has to have a positive 4 charge total in order to balance out the negative 4. So that way the compound itself can be neutral. Well, according to the formula of tin, or I'm sorry, according to the formula of SNO2, there's only one tin ion. There's only one SN ion, which means if SN, if the charge has to balance out the oxygen and there's only one of them, then that means tin has to be a plus 4 charge because that will give us our positive 4. Plus 4 minus 4 gives us 0. It's a neutral compound. Therefore, the name of this compound is going to be tin 4 oxide. Okay? And again, the 4 is represented here by now the Roman numeral. I apologize for the video being blurry. Tin 4 oxide. Go ahead and do number 3 and number 4 on your own. Pause the video here. And when you're done, you can check the answers, which I will give you in just a moment. Okay, continuing on now to see the answers. CuCl, both of these are, and, and uh, number four, MnN, both of these are going to be uh, neutral, or I'm sorry, uh, type two metals, meaning they can have multiple charges, okay? They can have multiple charges here. Then copper, C, CuCl, can have a charge of plus one or plus two. Just depends on what it's being bonded to. Now, if we look at, in order to figure out that charge, again, we have to figure out what the charge is on the anion. Well, let's name, the, let's name the ions first. Cu is going to be copper, and Cl, as you know, is chloride, okay? I've already changed it to IDE. Yes, Cl will be chlorine, but it is an ion, so it would be the chloride ion. Now, looking at our periodic table, chlorine is in group seven. If it's in group seven, that means it has a charge of minus one. So Cl here has a charge of minus one, and there is one of them, which means it is a negative one charge total. The ionic compound has to be neutral, which means the charge on copper has to balance out the charge on uh, chloride, which is a negative one. That means copper total has to equal positive one. Well, there is one copper ion, which means that one copper ion has to have a charge of plus one, which will give us the positive one charge. So then what is the name of copper of this particular CuCl? It is copper one chloride, or we can also call it cuprous chloride which would be the same thing as well. And there's your answer for number three. Now, number four, MnN. Mn, again, we're gonna name the cation first. Mn is manganese. And the anion is nitrogen, changing the ending to IDE, would be nitride. Now, this is a type two transition metal or a type two metal. It has multiple charges. It can be plus two or plus three. Just depends on what it's bonded with. Now, looking at nitrogen or nitride, it is in group five, which means it has a charge of negative three. So nitrogen or nitride here is going to have a charge of negative three. Manganese has to balance out the negative three charge. There's only one manganese. It means that manganese has to be a plus three charge. So we will write this as manganese three Nitride, the three in Roman numeral, once again, representing the charge of the type two metal. So just to recap one more time, there are three steps in writing ionic compounds. The first step is you just need to name the cation. You just simply name it based off its name and its symbol on the periodic table. Then you name the anion, which is the nonmetal, which is always the second name in the actual name itself. You change the ending of that to IDE. Now there are some special ones, remember, Sulfur does not become sulfuride, it becomes sulfide. Phosphorus does not become phosphoride, it becomes phosphide, okay? The other ones are pretty self-explanatory. Then the next thing you have to check is, do I have a type one cation or a type two? Again, type one, meaning it's in group one or two, it has a fixed charge, it can only have one charge. A type two metal or a transition metal can have multiple charges, therefore, if it has multiple charges, we have to represent those charges using now a Roman numeral in the name. So here were our examples that we went through. Lithium oxide, aluminum oxide, calcium oxide, magnesium nitride, and sodium phosphide. These are all now type one metals, and these are um, all ionic compounds. 
Next over here in the next set of four, we had four type two uh, metals or type two cations, which meant they had multiple or varying charges. And we had to uh, figure out the charge by looking at the charge of the anion. Reminder is that uh, ionic compounds have to be neutral. Their charge has to add up to zero. So the charge on the cation has to add up to the charge of the uh, anion so they can equal zero. Then we looked at iron is iron, Fe, sorry, Fe2O3 was iron three oxide, which came out to ferric oxide. Uh, SNO2 was tin four oxide. Uh, number three is copper one chloride, otherwise known as cuprous chloride. And then lastly was number four, MNN, which was manganese three nitride. Hopefully you're able to get them all correct. If you're having trouble, please go ahead and watch the video one more time and verify that you understand the steps, okay? Always name the cation first then name the anion and change the ending to IDE. If it is a type two or a transition metal, please make sure that you show the actual uh, charge in the name by representing it with a Roman numeral. If you have any questions, please go ahead and ask me in class.